Hi, how's it going? Uh, I'd like to talk to you about Earache On Demand. Uh, finally got the first record from them that I ordered from them. So, a um, little background. So, Earache Records um, is kind of the SST of heavy metal. Um, they started with um, putting out the, the first Napalm Death albums um, and then went on to put on put out a ton of super important death metal and grindcore um, and uh, I really got into them in the early 90s and um, yeah and so they've they've you know they've since earache has since like turned into a different label they've got totally different bands um, I, I also I say that the SST of the metal world because they had this period of being like one of the most respected labels out there and having some of the most important, exciting underground music. Um, and then went on to be like hated by all those bands that were on the label and, and no longer do that kind of music anymore and are just kind of a, a shell of what they once were. Um, but what's different about them is I think they have like pretty big bands now. I think they the, the bands that they put out are like chart highly in, in England at least. Um, Anyway, uh, Earache's reissues, uh, vinyl reissues of their classic stuff that the late 80s, early 90s catalog has generally been pretty great. Um, they started this series called, they call it Full Dynamic Range. So they're a little bit kind of weird about how they word it. Pressed from original tapes. So, you know, kind of word salad doesn't really mean much, right? I, I, don't, I don't take these to be all analog. What a weird way to put it. Pressed from original tapes. But anyway, um, these do sound great though. I mean, the, the full dynamic range, FDR is what they call it. And so what I take that to mean is that it's not compressed to death. Uh, and they sound great. I, I'm really happy with these. And the covers have been really great too. That's kind of one of the cool things about the original label doing this is they apparently have the artwork and they can just put it back out and they don't have to like, you know, Xerox a CD and then, and then do it from that. I just showed my age by using the word Xerox. So uh, anyway, um, yeah, so they, they call these full dynamic range and they're, they've been really good for the most part, but they've also been kind of inconsistent in what they put out and it just seems kind of random, the stuff they pick. Uh, so they finally put out Brutal Truth's first album like a year or two ago. This is 2021 on it, but I think it, ended, it didn't end up coming out until 2022 maybe, or maybe the very end of 2021. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of the early classic catalog, you know, this Terrorizer record um, that I'm playing in the background right now. I hope this video gets allowed for that reason. Um, so I've been really happy with those. Uh, but I've wondered, like, there's, there's, been, there's lots of great stuff that they never, they still haven't re-released, which seemed kind of crazy because, you know, you get the vinyl craze going on. It seems like you could pretty easily sell a lot of this classic stuff. And so how they've kind of decided to go about doing this is, is setting, establishing this earache on demand thing where like every month there's something like six releases and uh, if they get enough pre-orders for those to fully fund it then they'll actually press it and put it out and if not then not and uh, so um, and, and I think it was the very first month of this this is a uh, napalm death fear emptiness despair um, and uh, yeah this had never come out since the original issue um, and so, and you know, originals of this are prohibitively expensive. This isn't my favorite Napalm album, so I'm not gonna like shell out a whole bunch of dough for it. So I was really happy to see that they were putting this back out. They didn't say whether it was gonna be that FDR or not. Uh, eventually, if you could figure out through the catalog number that, uh, that they put FDR in the catalog number there. Um, and so when I saw that, I was happy to see that. Um, but it just arrived, I don't know, a few days ago, whenever it was, and um, it's it's a little bit weird. It's 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 different than the other ones. So for one, they don't they're not using the sticker, at least in the one they sent me. Maybe in stores it'll have that hype sticker. I don't know. Um, and the other disappointing thing is the cover kind of sucks. The artwork does. It's it's it it looks like you know a, a 20th generation copy. Um, it's a different color for the logo up there, and it just is not really high def <laughs> visuals here. Um, so, you know, whatever. That's that's still not the most important thing to me, really. I mean, sure, I'd prefer a better cover, but 
uh, I can live with that as, as long as the, the music is good. Um, and as far as I can tell, I got the red here. Uh, the best I can tell, I only l listened to this one so far. To my ears, it's, it sounds better than my memory of the original CD. So I think this album's from maybe 94. I could have looked that up. Um, doesn't say on here when it was originally issued, but it was it came out something like 94. And this was right at the tail end of, of me being into metal. Uh, and this was Napalm's first sort of excursion in a different direction, um, which I thought was interesting at the time. Um, like more, more dissonance, um, not just blast beats all the time. Um, you know, I thought it was an interesting record, but I also wasn't really compelled. Like I didn't continue to follow them at this point. Um, so, um, anyway, so what am I trying to say here? What I'm trying to say is that like, this turned out okay. Um, I'm glad that the music sounds good. The music seems to sound better than that. You know, the original CD, I thought sounded terrible at the time. Now, looking back and understanding the world a little bit differently, I think that it was compressed to hell. I think that's why, and I think this is less compressed. So it sounds better. Uh, the, the drums just sound more real. There's just a more depth to it. This also is not an amazing sounding record by any means, but uh, it, I'm pretty sure it, it improves upon the original CD. Uh, but again, I'm just going by my memory, and that was something like 30 years ago when that came out. Um, so, it makes me just wonder what to think about the on-demand, the whole on-demand program moving forward. My first reaction to it was was like, oh, this seems like a cool idea, actually. Like, you get the opportunity kind of to, to vote and to, to kind of like push them in certain directions. Um, but like, for the first several months of this, every single one was reaching its, its uh, you know, fully funded status so that it, so that they would actually do it. And so then it started to turn into like, well, why am I paying basically extra to, uh, to pre-order it when it's just going to get, it's just going to get made anyway. Um, since there have been a couple that, that didn't reach its, its quota, I don't, what do they call that? It didn't reach its full, fully funded thing. There was a Scorn album. There was something else that didn't. Um, and furthermore, they've done some kind of weird things like, um, for example, this, there's all these EPs that are pretty great from back then. Uh, I fortunately have an original of the uh, Carcass Tools of the Trade EP. absolutely love this. Um, and um, they are putting this back out, but not as a 12-inch 45. They're putting it out as a 12-inch 33 with this all on one side and then another Carcass EP, the Heartwork EP, as a 33 on the other side. Um, and so on the one hand, good that they're putting the Heartwork EP back in print, both of these back in print. These are just really cool EPs. Um, on the other hand, they don't seem to get what's good about these. They don't get that it's, it's neat to have this as a 45. They sound really good and it, it's all one thing. Um, so it's, it's mixed feelings about that, right? And so I don't really want the, that as a 33. I want, I want the, but the originals of the Heartwork EP are like 50 bucks at least. Uh, and they're all in Europe, so you got to pay to ship them over here. Um, but you know, what's the cover art going to be like, right? Like, you know, I'm, I've got the original cover art. I wouldn't want, you know, some lousier cover art. You know, here's some more originals that I have. Like the, the artwork can be really good on these ones. And for many of these, they did a really good job of reproducing it. You know, this is the reissue of Necroticism. Looks really good, and and this sounds great. So. I don't know. I'm a little bit worried that they're starting to lose their way, that they had done their reissues really well for several years here. And I'm concerned about, I don't know, there's some red flags coming up with how they're moving forward. The on-demand thing seemed like a good idea, and I don't know. I don't know if it's really turning out as, if it's going to live up to its to its seeming promise. So I've got a few more coming. Um, I've got Brutal Truth's second record. Uh, there's a Napalm Death record um, that, that never got released on... Uh, vinyl that they're releasing now on vinyl through this Cathedral's first album so I also pre-ordered those those will get here eventually and um, we'll see um, but for the time being I'm not gonna really participate in any more of the earache on demand stuff and I'm just gonna let that play out <laughs> not that it's all not that it's all hinging on my participation but uh, um, kind of like cautiously proceeding with this. So anyway, I thought I'd give you my little look at uh, the earache on demand thing and my experience with it. Uh, 
you know, my assessment of this is that it's okay. It sounds pretty good. I'm happy about that. The overall packaging uh, is a little disappointing. Um, okay, thanks a lot. So long.